from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the south. I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. The governor of the Mexican state of Puebla has been killed in a helicopter crash on Monday. Marta Erika Alonso died along with her husband, Senator and former Governor Rafael Moreno. Local media also reports that the pilot and another person died in the accident. Their helicopter came down not far from the state capital of Puebla City. The cause of the accident is still unknown. There is no element at this time that could lead us to any conclusion as to the cause outside of the operation of the helicopter. The control tower of Puebla Airport took notice of the takeoff and 10 minutes later, as mentioned by the Secretary of Security, communication was lost and a few seconds later there was a strange noise that we think was the helicopter's explosion. And Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has sent his condolences to the relatives of the victims. My deepest condolences to the relatives of Senator Rafael Moreno Valle and his wife, Governor of Puebla, Marta Erika Alonso. He tweeted, now in an interim governor will be appointed and an extraordinary vote must be held in three to five months to choose a new one. Mexico has once again denied signing any deal that will allow asylum seekers to wait in the country while their claims move through the U.S. courts. The government said it has no plans to make Mexico a third safe state country. It has also asked for details from the U.S. government on the plan to send asylum seekers to Mexico while they wait to be processed. The Mexican foreign minister also pledged to help to help end the horror migrants face when trying to cross into the U.S. Meanwhile, the Department of Homeland Security announced a new policy Thursday banning asylum seekers from entering the U.S. and requiring them to stay in Mexico. But Washington is yet to provide more information on exactly how the process will work. Under no condition, officially or de facto, has Mexico accepted the status of a safe country for people to return to or territory whilst they search for entry to the United States. An agreement on a safe country status is an international commitment that is based on a bilateral agreement. Mexico does not accept, it will not accept, signing a treaty under such circumstances. A safe country agreement would mean that any migrant from any place in the world that is passing through Mexico towards the United States for asylum will return as a condition for their claim. That is why we are not accepting an agreement of this kind. A yearly tradition for separated families continues this year at the U.S.-Mexico border under the shadow of the ongoing migrant crisis. The see through fence separating Tijuana and San Diego has long been a popular meeting point for loved ones who can spend the holidays together. While families on both sides of the border usually meet through the fence, this year it's been harder to get up close, increased security due to the thousands of Central American migrants waiting to receive asylum in the U.S. has forced many to talk to their relatives over mobile phones or simply wave from afar. We've come to see my niece. We came from Oaxaca to see her. It's been 15 years since we last saw her, and since it's close to Christmas, we wanted to speak to her. During the season when families come together, we've come all the way here so that we are not alone. To be with them is very special. My brother also lives here in Tijuana, so I also met with him. The body of Jacqueline Cal has been returned to her relatives in Guatemala. The seven-year-old girl died early this month while under the custody of U.S. Border Patrol agents. Jacqueline and her father were part of a group of migrants who handed themselves over the, to authorities after walking to the U.S.-Mexico border. While in custody, young Jacqueline developed a high fever and died two days later. Her body arrived at the village of San Antonio de Cortes early on Monday, where relatives have laid her to rest. We will take her remains to my home and we will mourn. We will all be together. A girl went out smiling, happy, and today she returned without life. 
our correspondent in Guatemala, Santiago Botón, attended a funeral service for the seven-year-old. The funeral vigil for Jacqueline Cal is underway at her home in the small community of San Antonio C. Cortez, about 350 kilometers north of Guatemala City. Her coffin arrived just after 5 a.m. on Monday. The foreign ministry did not allow Jacqueline's relatives to accompany the hearse from the airport and were asked to wait here for her body to arrive. Meanwhile, members of the tight-knit community have gathered here to say their final farewell to the seven-year-old girl. Thank you, Santiago, for that report. Brazilians from all walks of life are making sure that former President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva isn't going to celebrate Christmas alone. Hundreds of supporters are holding a vigil outside the federal police headquarters in Curitiba, where the former president is being held. Supporters are singing Christmas carols while hosting inter-religious ceremonies and a Christmas dinner. They are also sending holiday messages on the microphone to Lula. And Lula sent a Christmas letter to the visual. In the letter, Lula thanks the hundreds of supporters who left their homes to spend Christmas in front of the federal police headquarters. He said that because of them, he won't be alone this holiday and told supporters to stay strong as the struggle for a better world continues. Experts are warning that another tsunami could strike Indonesia. There are concerns as Anak Krakatoa continues to erupt. Authorities remain vigilant on the ongoing activity of the volcano. Meanwhile, rescue teams are continuing to look for survivors. The, tsuna the tsunami provoked by the volcano hit the Sunday strain on Saturday has left at least 429 people dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, humanitarian workers are warning that clean water and medicine supplies are dwindling. Fears about a public health crisis rise as survivors cram shelters. Thousands of people have been displaced from their flattened homes. The government of Ecuador has issued a warning for coastal towns because of storm surges over the weekend. The alert will remain in place until December 26th in the provinces of Esmeraldas, Manabí, and El Oro. While no casualties or injuries have been reported, the surges ha heavily damaged homes and infrastructure along the coast. And authorities have reopened Catania Airport on the island of Sicily after it was closed by the eruption of Italy's Mount Etna on Monday. The airport will see limited traffic operating four flights an hour. More than 100 tremors have been shaken the area surrounding the volcano in the past week. Mount Etna is the highest volcano in mainland Europe and is considered one of the most active volcanoes in the world. More stories coming up, we'll be back. Welcome back. 
ancestral authorities in Guatemala have recognized the, group of the work of a group of midwives by handing them a cane that symbolizes their knowledge and service delivering babies within their, co their communities, but they're still looking for recognition from the official health system. The midwives of the indigenous community of Los Copones in the municipality of Ixcan have received their authority canes, which recognize their voluntary work in their communities. This is a symbol of authority because the midwives don't ask for this job. They were born with that wisdom, with those ancestral practices, and it is a great reason to respect and value their work. Recognition is handed over by the Great Council of Ancestral Authorities of the indigenous communities of Los Copones, which works under the system of legal pluralism. We form part of the indigenous authorities, which belong to the Mayan people. This is where we live, where we serve our people. It is time for the government to recognize our work. The midwives consider this recognition as a legal tool to legalize their work before the health ministry. It is like a symbol that identifies us and encourages us indigenous midwives. It's like this official card handed TP us by the health ministry. The midwives say they face racism and discrimination inside the health system, which intends to remove them from this ancestral practice. The health system wants to get rid of us, but we join together to fight and to ask the government to support us. There are a lot of us who want to fight for our cause. The midwives' movement demands that the Congress discuss a law for the legalization of their work, which has been rejected by the executive power. In 2017, President Jimmy Morales overruled a decree which sought to legalize the work of the indigenous midwives across the country. St. Kitts and Nevis poorest citizens receive an early Christmas present from their government, hours before he was due in Parliament to debate the opposition's non-confidence motion against him Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris launched the Poverty Alleviation Program. Grants were distributed to households earning less than $100, $100 per month. Harris' team Unity Government says it is confident that the opposition's motion will fail and they are ready for Monday evening's debate. Today, what is happening here? in Bastyr, is happening also in Charlestown, in Beavis. Hundreds of people everywhere. Indeed, by the time we would have completed the tally, close to 4,000 persons will be leaving today with a check in their hand, thanks to your Team Unity Government. And Dr. Timothy Harris defeated the opposition's non-confidence motion in him. In Monday's special sitting, the 2019 budget was also passed in the same session. All sectors of the Honduran economy continue to suffer as the country losses over $1 billion annually to corruption. Citizens are calling on the government to take action against these entrenched illicit practices and the impunity that comes along with them. The situation has aroused public fury. The people are demanding an end to the economic hemorrhaging. It's the poorest citizens who pay the ultimate price. As a result, many are forced to flee their homeland. We are forced to leave our homeland and try to make a living in other countries where we can possibly find work. There is nothing here for us. Every week a new corruption scandal is unearthed and it's often linked to organized crime. The situation has proven to be damaging to the economy, yet it continues unabated. The National Anti-Corruption Council has conducted investigations into several incidents of alleged corruption in public office. These corrupt practices have put a $30 million dent in the economy. The millions of dollars lost to corruption exceeds the total budgetary allocations for both health and education. Health and education are important sectors that require a large share of the budget. National security is another area that requires a significant investment. This to ensure citizens' welfare. 
la destrucción. There is also widespread concern that the government has been trying to cover up corruption at state enterprises and consequently shield wrongdoers. Every time, more and more corruption is reported, but nothing ever happens. People who are linked to these illicit acts are never punished. This means that there is not justice, no hope. There is also concern that the poor are not benefiting from government's annual $1 billion investment in the social development sector. This as 68% of Honduras' population continue to live in poverty. Two interstate regional bodies from Southern and Central Africa are meeting in Congo, Brazzaville, to discuss the deepening crisis in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The leaders of the Southern Africa Development Community and the International Conference on Great, the Great Lakes Regions are meeting to try and find a way of promoting stability in the DRC. Tensions have been high in the country after the elections were postponed from the 23rd of December to the 30th. And the Catholic Church in the DRC has called on the government to keep its promise and ensure that free and fair elections are held on December 30. During his Christmas address, the Archbishop of Kinshasa, Fridolin Ambogo, said failure to do so will put the country's fragile peace at risk. Congolese people are celebrating Christmas despite the tense atmosphere prompted by the upcoming presidential election. Residents in the city of Goma buy last hour decorations and toys while discussing the possible electoral outcome. Presidential, legislative and provincial elections have been scheduled for Sunday, diffusing a two-year crisis over the future of President Joseph Kabila. Politics is part of life, like us as Christians, Christianity is life and everything gets tangled up. We pray to God that it will be done in peace. Pope Francis has held the traditional Christmas Mass at the Vatican. During his Christmas Eve message, the Pope criticized the instability greed of today's consumerism. Thousands of believers have gathered in the St. Peter's Basilica to listen to the Christmas Mass. 1.3 billion Catholics across the world are celebrating the day of Jesus' birth. Then, as we enter the stable, sensing in the tender poverty of the newborn child a new fragrance of life, the odor of simplicity, let us ask ourselves, do I really need all these material objects and complicated receipts for living? Can I manage without all these unnecessary extras and live a life of greater simplicity? Dozens of yellow vest protesters gathered on the Champs Elysees Avenue in Paris this Christmas Eve. They're demanding the resignation of President Emmanuel Macron. Protesters also want to have more say in the institution's decision making. Several police blocked the Arc of Triumph to prevent protesters from approaching the monument. Why did I come here? Ah, because Macron does not want to resign, and we have had enough. Voila, Macron. I don't know. Talks, talks, and talks. More news in a minute. Stay with us. Telesur brings you special interviews with social and political personalities. Monday, from Washington. Tuesday, from Mexico. Wednesday, from Caracas. Thursday, from Quito. Friday, from Havana. Analysis about our continent's reality. Weekdays, only on Telesur. With developing events being presented through analysis. Our coverage transcends borders. With renowned journalist Walter Martinez. Saludos, amigos, tripulantes de nuestra querida, contaminada y única nave espacial. Dossier. 
weekdays. Only on Telesur. Y pongo usted de las cámaras, señor director. Welcome back. Hundreds of people have attended the Christmas Eve Midnight Mass in the Church of Nativity, believed by Christians to be the birthplace of Jesus. Among them was Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. The Mass in the Israel-occupied West Bank town of Bethlehem has been held by the Lat Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem. Thousands of tour tourists and worshippers fill the Holy Land during Christmas season. First of all, I want to greet you and all uh, your delegation that you came. As uh, according to tradition, you are part of the status quo now. You cannot avoid it. Uh, tradition to celebrate with us the, this Christmas night. We are very happy to have you with us for what you represent. Dozens of migrant children have celebrated Christmas at sea on the open arms rescue boat. The Spanish charity has released a video of children receiving Christmas gifts. 300 migrants are on the boat after being rescued off the coast of Libya on Saturday. They are currently making its way to the Spanish port of Alcerias after the vessel was refused entry by Malta and Italy. At least three people have been killed in a suicide attack in Libya. The attacker targeted the foreign ministry in the capital Tripoli. Security officials report that a second suicide bomber was shot dead by guards. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack yet. A United Nations team is visiting Yemen's Red Sea port city of Hureyda. The UN Joint Committee is tasked with overseeing the implementation of the ceasefire. Both Houthi representatives and representatives of the Saudi-backed government accompanied the committee. The ceasefire began on December 18. However, the two rival forces have blamed each other for violations of the ceasefire. If you read the agreement, the timelines are very tight. That means that the ceasefire started on the 18th of December at midnight, which is extremely important that both sides are holding that and that both sides show not to blame you and he blames him and everybody blames everybody. Breaking a ceasefire is going back and not forward. Pakistan's tiny Christian community is also celebrating Christmas. In the city of Karachi, worshippers sung Christmas carols and held prayers during the Christmas Mass. Thai security measures have been taken to protect them from attacks. Christians account for only 2% of Pakistan's population. At least two people were killed and another 11 injured after a car bomb exploded in the Iraqi city of Al Far. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack. The city became a stronghold of the Islamic State group in 2014 and produced some of the most senior commanders. With about 200,000 residents, Tal Al Far was taken over by US backed Iraqi security forces in August 2017. At least five people have been killed and another 21 injured in, a, in China after a hijacked bus crashed into pedestrians. A police officer was among the five confirmed dead. Police have detained a man who is yet to be identified. Local media reports that that man first attacked a female passenger before taking control of the bus. The Nikkei in Japan has become the latest stock, stock exchange to plunk. 
it closed having dropped 5 percent its worst finish since April 2017. Global markets are suffering as they react to political uncertainty in the United States. U.S. stocks endure their worst Christmas Eve on record. Christmas is being celebrated in the Syrian city of Aleppo as the city rebuilds. A battle for the city lasted four years, ending just days before Christmas in 2016. The holiday now goes hand in hand with liberation celebrations. Festivities include the unveiling of the city's main Christmas tree, caroling and fireworks. And with this, we come to the end of this news brief. This and many other stories you can find on our website at elsurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Merry Christmas, and thank you for watching.